Hi everyone, welcome back to Risa Does Makeup. Today I'm going to be talking to you all about Stellar Beauty. You might have heard of this makeup line, you might not have. Um, I did see it online, I was curious about it, and people have actually asked me in the, pre in the past like six months or so if I was gonna review Stellar Foundation or what I thought of the line. So when I was approached from the company to pick out some products and try them, I was ecstatic. This is not technically a sponsored video because they did not pay me to do it, but they did send me these products complimentary for my review and I was able to choose a certain amount of products from their collection and uh, demonstrate them to you and give you my thoughts. Now in this video I should have said, I put first impressions in the title, but I really should have said sort of first impressions because a couple of the items I have used already like the foundation and the concealer because I felt like, I've, I've said this in other videos, that I feel like first impressions when it comes to foundations aren't really helpful. And I thought if some of you are only here to hear about the foundation, I wanted to make sure that I didn't just give you a first impression, that I had used it for a couple days first. Um, some of the other products, most of the other products, I'm using for the first time on camera. So I wanna give you a little bit of background on the brand and then we'll jump in. I feel terrible because I'm probably gonna butcher her name, but the creator of Stellar is Monica Dole or Deal. D-E-O-L. She started this brand, Indian born and Canadian raised. The products did ship to me from Canada. And it says that she spent 25 years in front of the camera as a successful television host, actress and model, thousands of hours spent in the makeup chair, had her asking why isn't there better makeup for medium skin tones. And it said, it goes on to say, Monica knows firsthand the frustrations with makeup felt by those with Hispanic, Latino, African-American, Southeast Asian, West, East Indian complexions. I have experience with concealers that don't conceal our dark circles, foundations that have to be mixed to match, and powders that are too ashy. I don't need a focus group. I get this market because I am this market. So I am probably not technically her market because I am pretty fair. So um, take that into consideration when, well, I consider myself, I'm light skin and when I self tan, I'm definitely more towards the medium. But anyway, I do believe that a good portion of those of you watching will be very, very interested um, in this brand and have a lot of success with it. You'll see in my tutorial why I say this because for me, it struggle a little bit with color selection as far as the foundation and the concealer goes. But I want you guys to just know that background going into this video. So, you know, it kind of makes sense when I say certain things throughout the tutorial and review. So without further ado, let's get to the application, the first impressions. And then at the end, I will quickly run through every product and tell you whether it was a yay or a nay. And yeah, so let's get to it. All right, I'm gonna begin with the Limitless Liquid Foundation. I saw 22 shades on Sephora.com and they all are labeled like with their undertones. Like S11 is a medium with strong peach undertones. SO2 very fair with pink undertones. I ended up getting nine because it said light medium with yellow undertones. And that's typically what I will choose. I don't think there was one with neutral undertones. Usually I'll go light medium with neutral undertones, but I don't think I saw that one. Buying online is not easy. Um, so I don't know why I didn't read more reviews before I made my selection. It doesn't look very dark in the packaging, but it definitely is a little dark on me. As you'll see, it did oxidize just a little bit throughout the day and it actually the yellow undertones really started coming out more. So if you are someone that struggles to find a real olive yellow undertone, then look no further than this because this undertone was really, really strong. So its claims are that it's a medium to full coverage foundation, best for normal to combination skin, has a radiant finish, smooths on like a second skin, concealing discoloration, hyperpigmentation, for a professionally retouched look, no parabens, sulfates, or um, fat. Phthalates, I think that's how you pronounce it. So I have discovered that my favorite way to apply it is just with my finger. I feel like nobody shows foundation applications using fingers and it's fine. You can use your fingers. You don't have to have a beauty sponge. You don't have to have a brush. And I, as I said, like the finish of this just using my fingers. I almost forgot to talk about the packaging. It is 1.01 fluid ounces. And the packaging is kind of plasticky, but this actually feels nicer to me than the Huda Beauty plastic. I feel like this one is just, 
I don't know, something about it, maybe because of the way the foundation is poured in there. And then the cap reminds me a little bit of the NARS um, packaging, where you know you can get fingerprints on it pretty easily, but it's very nice looking. It's very smooth and gives it a more of an upscale feel. And it has a pump, which a lot of you know is a must for me. So I do quick, two quick little pumps on my fingers, and you can see that yellow undertone, I think, pretty clearly here. And you can definitely see it here. So it is very, very lightweight, very, very blendable. Now, I, as you can see, it's too dark and too yellow for me. Now, when I first applied this, I thought it was more sheer to medium coverage. It's definitely buildable, but I think I've kind of been um, thrown off a little bit by the fact that I have been using the uh, Jouer Ultimate Coverage Foundation, which is full, full coverage, the, probably the most coverage I've ever tried in a foundation. So I'm used to wearing that. So now nothing else that even claims to be full coverage comes close to that. But you know, I know a lot of people don't want that super um, full coverage like the Jouer. I think that people are, you would really like this if you want more of like an adjustable foundation, one that can go from being more sheer. If you used a beauty blender, a damp beauty blender, you would get even less coverage than this. I would say this is definitely, in my mind, it's more medium to the sheer side, more than medium to full. Now I'm gonna demonstrate, like right here is where I have discoloration and just some um, you know, marks from very old breakouts because this is where I used to break out a lot. So I'm gonna go over it again before I do the rest of my face. So I got too much out, so I'm gonna put a little bit over here. You definitely get medium coverage with two coats. So I do have to take this one really down my neck because it is too dark. So they say it's a radiant finish and I definitely agree. It is not matte, it is very skin-like and it doesn't emphasize pores, it feels amazing on the skin, it doesn't emphasize any dry, it doesn't cling to any dry patches, but you know, I have very, very oily skin, and I, as I said, I'm used to, a, I like a lot of coverage. So this would be, for me, it would be more of a just day-to-day -day foundation. It wouldn't be like my makeup for photos, it wouldn't be like my makeup for a big event, but for some of you, it might be. If you have really nice skin and you want, um, or you only have like just minor things to cover, and you want just a real naturally radiant look, then I would definitely recommend this. So when they named it Limitless, it was definitely appropriate because it did wear all day long. I didn't have any separation through my T-zone. It looked perfect. As I said earlier, it did oxidize just a hair. I felt like I looked very yellow, but you know, I think I just need to try a different color. Overall, I'm really impressed with the with this foundation. I think it's gonna be a good one for a, a good amount of people. I just know that from my own experience, it probably won't be the favorite of somebody who's really, really oily and likes more um, full, true full coverage. But for a medium coverage foundation that looks skin-like, it gets a thumbs up from me. Now, I kind of messed up on ordering the concealer too. Not kind of, I really did mess up. I don't know what possessed me to order shade three in the concealer. It said shade 03 was light, medium, with yellow undertones. And I probably should have gone with one, but I just thought, I don't know, light medium, and I don't like my concealer to be too much lighter than my foundation, but this is dark. <laughs> I have to say, uh, I personally would not call this a light medium. I do like the packaging. I do like the doe foot applicator, but as you'll see, that's pretty dark. It's almost darker than the foundation. Now, the good news is that it covers really well, but it gives no brightening effect for my skin because it's just not light enough. It needs to be a little bit lighter. Now, if you were using this to conceal like marks on the face, like when I said that I felt like the foundation didn't cover this area enough, like it definitely gives great coverage to spot conceal. It goes on really nicely and it did not cling to fine lines throughout the day. It didn't make my eyes look dry, so that was a plus. But I just wish that I had gotten, again, the right color. So because that concealer isn't really the right shade for me, I'm gonna add just the tiniest amount of Tarte's Shape Tape, just like right here, to give it more of a brightening effect. 
I also ordered the Cosmic Face Setting Powder and I got the shade Glow, which is just the translucent. And again, again, same packaging. It does come with a puff, but I won't be using that. And then I'm gonna peel off the plastic. And add a little bit in the cap. Ooh, it feels very, very silky. Definitely took down shine, so if you're oily, I highly recommend using a powder. So as long as this doesn't have flashback and photos, I think it's pretty nice. Next up is this Face Sculptor. This is a contour and highlighting palette. It comes in two different shades, Umbra, which is the light medium, and then Nebula, which is the medium dark. So you've got one contour shade and then two highlight shades. So this is the contour shade. This is the gold highlight shade, and they're calling one a rose gold highlight, which I'm assuming is this one. So at this point in my makeup application, I'm just gonna use the um, contouring side. So I like the color, I like that it's matte. I like that it has almost like a taupey undertone versus a reddish undertone, because that definitely looks more natural as a contour. So, so far, I really like the contour shade. I did not get a brow product, so I'm gonna go put on my brows, and then we'll start working on the eyes. So for my eyes, I'm using the Magnetic Eyeshadow Palette in Solar. Now, I already did one eye using this because I just wanted to figure out what look I was gonna show you, and I'm pretty happy with it overall. The pigmentation is very, very nice, and you'll see when I work with these shimmers that they really do have a nice pop to them. It did come with two of these little applicator things, but um, they fell out immediately and I didn't care because I don't really see the point of those. I always use brushes. I think most people these days have a nice selection of brushes. I have seen other brands, even inexpensive brands, that put in like a full size crease brush, which aren't that aren't terrible quality. So I think instead of the little plastic things, they should just put in one decent uh, crease brush. I wanted to do sort of a golden, smoky, burgundy look, and I'm using the MAC 242 brush. Sorry, I don't know for sure because all of my numbers have worn off, but any synthetic small brush like this will work. So I'm dampening the brush, and I'm going into this beautiful gold. I should mention that my lids are already primed with Too Faced Shadow Insurance, and I'm taking the gold, and you can see how nicely pigmented that is and I'm applying it to just the center of my lid. I'm not coming into the inner corner and I'm not going too far to the outer corner. Now I'm just flipping the brush around and going into this gold shade. Did I say this is gold? This is more of like a bronzy gold and this is more of like a yellow gold. So I'm taking that and placing it in the inner third of the eye and then into my tear duct. Now I'm using the 2.5 crease brush from Samey Beauty and I'm going into this beautiful burgundy shade and I'm applying this to the outer third of my eye and then bringing it in to the crease. So I'm blending out here first and then swiping back in towards my nose. So these shadows are really nicely pigmented. They're not so pigmented that you just get too much color right at once, but you don't have to go in several times to build a color. I just went in twice and I, I'm at the level of intensity that I desire. Now you might find that you've gotten rid of some of that original bronzy color, but no big deal. I'm gonna go back in and touch it up. Matte. Now with the Sigma E25 blending brush, I'm going in with this matte ivory and I'm just popping that right underneath the brow just kind of blending out that burgundy shade at the top. Now to make the look a touch more smoky, I'm using the Sigma E47 brush and going in with the darkest shade in the palette, which is this dark neutral brown. And I'm just taking this along the brush line and right at the outer V, the outer corner, just ever so slightly, not adding a lot of color at all. This shade has a little bit of fallout, but it's minor. It's nothing like, um, I won't name the other palette, but it has a brown at the end and it has fallout like crazy. This one does not. I decided I wanna work in one more shade, so I'm gonna take my MAC 217 and this light neutral taupe, and with my eyes open, 
I'm just going to add it right in between the ivory and the burgundy transition color. And so now this becomes my transition shade. Now I'm using Stila Brush 28 back in with that dark brown and I'm just smudging it all along my upper lash lines and then also along my lower lash line. And then I'm going in using that same brush with this lighter burgundy shade. There's two burgundies in here and there's the darker one that I used and now this is the lighter one. And I'm going over where I placed the brown. So I went ahead and applied some mascara. Now we will zoom out and finish off the face. For blush, I chose this shade called Flare, a really pretty pinky peach and very pretty. You almost don't need a highlighter with this. Oh, I like this a lot. Yeah, this color is really, really pretty. It's glowy, but it's not glittery. The pigment is great, and look at that sheen. But I still have to test one of the highlighters, so, so I'm gonna go with the one in the center using a fan brush from Smashbox. Ooh, that is pretty. As far as color payoff, I think it's really nice, and I think the tone is really beautiful too. Now for lips, I ordered two different lip products to try. I ordered the Infinite Lipstick in the shade Dark Matter, and this Stardust Lip Powder Palette that I thought was interesting. It is three shades of powder lip product. Comes in two different palettes. I ordered the O2, which is the gold, pale pink, and burgundy. And then there is um, O1, which is red, fuchsia, and silver gold. On Sephora.com it says that Stardust Lip Powder Palette features three high pigment shades and an innovative formula that's hydrating while powdering lips with dimension, radiance, and rich color. The weightless powders can be worn alone for, sheer sh for a sheer shimmery look or layer them over infinite lipstick or metallic moon lipstick for a 3D velvet matte look. So we're gonna do it over a lipstick. So first I'm gonna line with just a nude lip pencil. Now this Dark Matter lipstick is a beautiful color and formula. Unfortunately, when I received mine, the bullet fell out as soon as I opened it. But I'm sure that was just a fluke thing. If you order from Sephora and you have any problems, you can obviously exchange it or return it. But um, it didn't stop me from using it. The color to me is like a mauve -y nude. It's not like a flesh tone nude. It's not an orangey nude. Actually, I would say it's more like a pinky nude. The formula is really nice. It's really creamy. It's opaque. So here we have the look without the lip topper or lashes, but we're going to add the lip topper and then we're going to add some lashes and then I'll give you my final thoughts. I think I'm going to try the gold. I think that's pretty. I was a little concerned that it would be too metallic-y, but it's not. Oh, now it's getting a little, you layer it, it gets a little bit more metallic-y. Now I want to try the burgundy one. So I'm going to layer it. Oh, that's nice too. I think this one goes better with the look. I think it was a little too light with just the gold. I'm gonna add like the darker burgundy to the outer corners. So I went ahead and applied some, I think, natural looking eyelashes to complete the look and they will be listed in the description bar. I'll give you one last glance at the look I created. And now I wanna ru quickly run through each item and just tell you what I think of it. So the foundation, I really, really do like it. Be careful when ordering your color. They definitely oxidize a little. They definitely run uh, darker than you would think. The texture is great. The wear time is great. As described, it's best for a normal to combination skin who likes a radiant natural finish. In my opinion, it leans more toward sheer medium than medium false. The concealer, also very nice. Also need to be careful when ordering because this, this runs very, very dark. Love the packaging, love the application. It gives decent amount of coverage. It's not 
the most full coverage concealer I've ever tried, but the pros are that it doesn't settle into fine lines. And I think if I had the right color, I would be much more happy with it. Right now for the loose powder, I don't think there's much you can say about loose powder, unless maybe it was like chalky or left a white cast, but this doesn't, it's very, very silky. It seems to be very finely milled. It doesn't add any um, extra coverage. It's just w everything that you want in just a standard translucent setting powder. The face sculptor, this, is excellent. If you have light skin and you're looking for a light, uh, natural looking powder to contour with, this is definitely it. And these highlighters I think are fantastic. So this is definitely a standout product for me. I also really love the eyeshadows. I feel like the packaging could be a little bit better on this. It doesn't feel very luxurious. In fact, when I first looked at it, when I first saw it, it reminded me of the L'Oreal La Palette Nude, not the colors, but the packaging, although that packaging is a little bit bigger, it just doesn't seem, I don't know, something about the way this is set up, just, I don't know. But but the product itself is great. And I think you're getting a lot of nice eyeshadows for the price. As suggested, I think that they should maybe remove the little plastic thingies, because I think that's also what kind of takes it down, um, in my mind, from being a more high-end brand to, to just looking like something more drugstore-y, is those little plastic applicators in there. I think that just a standard brush, or no, nothing at all would be better. You can even maybe put like a little mirror here. I don't know, but the shadows themselves are great quality, very pigmented, very happy with this. We'll be reaching for this a lot. The blush, as you saw in my tutorial, I think is beautiful. So if you are drawn to pinky, peachy, glowy blushes, definitely recommend picking up Flare. And then the lip products. Of course, I only got one color, but the packaging on this is nice. It feels more high-end, um, except for the bullet falling out. Um, the color's nice, the formula's nice. I'd have to look at their other colors to see. I didn't think that they had like the hugest range of lipstick shades, but um, it seems like they have all the basics covered, you know, nude, red, all that. Um, and then this little guy, this uh, Stardust Lip Powder Palette, I thought that was pretty interesting, something I think worth having if you like to experiment with different lip colors and textures and just something different. So I'm really happy I got this as well. So overall, I'm really, really happy with all of the items I tried. There isn't really a dud in the bunch. I highly recommend looking into this line. I don't really think many people talk about it, but yeah, it's pretty good. I'm glad I had the opportunity to try the brand. I appreciate Stellar sending me these items. I hope that uh, they will like the feedback that I have given and I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well. So please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. You can also check out my Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, Twitter. All of that is Risa Does Makeup. Thank you guys again for watching and I'll see you very soon.